The following copblock.org video is brought to you by nevertakeaplea.org. didn't want to give in to what was requested. They wanted to go about their business the way they wanted to do it. I'm suggesting you hear the evidence that you hear that the way they wanted to proceed on July 1st, 2010 is in violation of the law. So I'm told I can talk about facts this morning in the opening statement. So the fact is, last July 1st, um, my friend and I went down, came down to Greenfield to bail our friends out. Um, we self-described as Eddie Jones, we had a couple of websites, we filmed everything, we were kind of like documentarians. We were filming as we often do. Um, when we walked into the facility, the Franklin County Jail, um, we checked on walls. There were no signs of any uh, video cameras. We were uh, properly The jail is a, is a public building paid for by taxpayer money. I know that I didn't hurt anybody. And so I hope that you would um, you know, use common sense and judge the facts as they are and, and uh, do, what you, do what you think you should. I don't believe myself and my colleagues deserve to be in a cage for. You know what, what they're alleging we have done, so I appreciate you. So I do want to thank you for coming out. I'm sure you all have very more important things than uh, standing here for the program today and having to hear this case. You don't have to believe what we say or what Mr. Banks says. You can watch the tape for yourself from that time. We have the opportunity to take you back to July 1st, 2010. To me, the video camera is the greatest tool of transparency. It's why we use it in what we do with our websites and, and uh, our daily activities. And it is it's not only for ourselves and our own personal protection, it's also a whole everybody accountable. So you'll see our question of how we never refuse a lead. We never refuse to help ourselves, we never refuse to stop going. We wanted to ask questions. These men purport to uphold the law and know it, but yet they couldn't provide us a policy, a statute, or even when they actually arrested us, when we arrested for a filming violation at all. They uh, wholeheartedly expected us to take the plea deal. And some of these charges were dropped previously. But like my colleague said, I didn't harm anybody, anybody's property. We're really over asking questions and the right to record public officials conducting their duties in a public space, not you while they're recording us up there. So I appreciate you being here. And I can't wait to show you guys the facts in this case and the video as well. I think uh, I have no doubt in my mind that you can do that. Good afternoon, sir. Good you please state your full name, spelling your first name, last name for the record, please? Uh, Brian Schiller. How are you in court, sir? I am the captain at the uh, Franklin County Sheriff's Office. When did you first uh, become aware of the individuals at the House of Corrections? Uh, approximately 6 p.m. I was notified that there were two individuals that walked into the facility lobby, uh, area of camcorders, and using them. Uh, I went to the lobby and asked them uh, what their intentions were, and they said they were here with their friend. And uh, they also stated the cameras were for their protection. Um, earlier you say that uh, you, you were confused when the conversation was going on with your colleague, Mr. Trzynski, uh, about what he communicated to us. Uh, is it reasonable to assume that an individual could be uh, similarly confused when um, given, when given um, uh, orders that uh, were not supported by any policies um, to when being placed in handcuffs, uh, wanting to you know, hang out to a property that just that show this uh, whole interaction? If the orders were not clear, sure. Okay. Uh, Mr. Schindler, any time you were aware your conversation was being transmitted to somebody else? Uh, okay, so there's no evidence or proof to that at all? There's nothing. Over? Any time you don't believe your conversation being transmitted? I believe it was. He's a witness. Sustained. Any time you were aware that anybody else is hearing the conversation. Foundation uh, overruled. I wasn't sure. I knew that it possibly could be. Because when you swap into a cell phone and raise it, I had a feeling somebody else might be listening. Are you aware of any video and or audio recordings that take place at the facility in which you work? Yeah. <laughs> what kind of system that is? Are there multiple cameras? Are there new audio and the, video? There are multiple cameras, but no, they are not audio. Are there phones that are Conversation are recorded within the facility? The inmate phones are recorded when they make copies. So you 
just a minute, my colleague at our home came in the facility filming us. Yes. So is there an expectation of privacy in the lobby? Uh, within the jail? No. Mr. Schiller, were you ever uh, in fear of great bodily harm for myself and my colleague? No, oh, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Could you please state your full name, spelling your uh, first name, last name, correct? My name's Todd, D O D D M, Dodge, D O D G E. And how are you doing, sir? Greenfield Police Department. Now, sir, did how many cameras did you see with Mr. Mueller and Mr. Uh, on Mr. Mueller, I observed clearly that he had the one in his hand, the handheld camera, and then he had a uh, pendant on him. That at the time I wasn't sure, but I was guessing it was most likely a video recording device. Uh, Mr. Air, from what I recall, he had the handheld. And up until the point you inventoried the property, you were you aware of that one having a cell phone? I don't recall one. Uh, again, I didn't notice a cell phone until I had actually seen the footage. And uh, Mr. Mueller had a cell phone? That's right. You assumed at that point that the video camera was recording? Yes. After I was advised by dispatch that a conversation between myself and the two defendants was already published on the internet, that's when the decision to charge them with that. How long after their arrest did you become aware of that conversation? I'm going to say within 10 or 15 minutes. It was pretty you know, soon after. Mr. Mueller basically just went and fell to the ground. Um, as I was trying to place the cuffs on, however, he did tighten up, turn away from me, and, and resist to a certain extent. At the time you arrested Mr. Mueller, sir, were you aware of what he was doing with the cell phone today? I was not. Uh, I was shown on a particular website, I don't recall the exact site, um, I was shown an audio recording of myself along with these individuals while at that house correction the minutes prior. And you got a chance to listen to see the interviews? I did. So I just wanted to ask you with this plate for the jurors. All right. Yes. But would you say that it's common that you would reference a statue of some sort? Sure. Did you reference any statutes on July 1st, 2010? Yes. When? Trespassing. I think you saw that on the video. Right, but we had questions about whether or not we could be trespassing on public property, correct? Yes. And how did you answer those questions? I explained to you that the jail at that point in time was actually in, you know, being run by uh, Captain Chinman. And because it was his wishes that you guys shut the camera off or leave, I was then upholding his orders with you telling you to leave or shut the cameras off. Um, to your knowledge, is Captain Schindler the property holder of the Franklin County Jail? At that point in time, he was, in my opinion, yes. Captain Schindler testified earlier that you and Jordan Lemecki and himself all conferenced outside the jail prior to our interactions uh, at Foster's, is correct? Right? That is not correct. I actually encountered you in Foster's parking lot, as shown on the videos. The next time I came to the jail, actually the first time I came to the jail, you <coughs> guys were back in I arrived at the Sheriff's Department, met with Captain Schindler, Sergeant Lavnack, and all of them confirmed that the two males had left the building and described the two and noted that their description matched that of the two items they were walking in Foster's Rock. Is that all you want? That is, thank you. So I can ask you again, did you meet with uh, Captain Schindler and Officer Lavnack yeah. prior to our reaction that week? I guess I did. Yeah. At what point did you realize you were being video and audio report? The moment I pulled up to you guys, you guys had your cameras in your hand and it was clear that you guys were filming. So based off of your report, would it be safe for me saying that I assume you knew you were being audio and video recorded before you were arriving at the jail or before you were meeting myself or Pierre? It's hard to say. I mean, I don't know what, you were, I don't know what your intent was at the jail, but clearly when I pulled up to you, yes, I had a pretty good feeling on you. But while you were in group there, you had a good idea as well that you were going to see to which you would be audio and video recorded. For your statement. Sure. I did not know that you took that recording of that conversation between you and I 
and send it out and have it published on the internet. Excuse me. Do you have any evidence that I posted anything to any website? Yes, a conversation between you and I. Where was I during, when you found out that publication, where, were I, where was I just currently saying? You were being booked. So <laughs> you were That's correct. Did you allow me to use the internet? No. <laughs> Did you allow me to use that phone or any of my equipment? No. <coughs> How do you think that I placed that wire with that recording online? I'm assuming you were doing it right there without my knowledge. That's why. Okay. I was talking to you, telling you that Captain Schindler is in charge of this. Okay, so you, that's the beginning of this conversation of the, of the alleged wiretapping. That is the beginning of the alleged wiretapping audio that was going to be earlier. <coughs> agree? Sure. Okay, so that's the beginning. I'd like to sync that then with the video that was taking place that day of ours, okay. so that there is no, so that the jury can see exactly where our interaction was supposed to be. Have you had more eyes on what the, 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 the rights violation you had? You have to be the person responsible. No. People are going to say, am I engaged in the conversation going on right now? I know. You're going to name you guys in, in court and say you guys yeah. violated our rights. I just pulled a cell phone. I'm serious. It's not a violation. It sure is. Yeah. Uh, the, from watching the video, what do you think I'm doing here? Now I can see that it looks like you're dialing on a cell phone, but I haven't yet looked at you in the video as you're okay. doing so. I'm asking what you see here today. It looks like you're making a phone call. He's in charge of the facility. That's all I asked him. That's all that matters here. He's in charge. He said... Um, you're looking at me now, correct? Yes. And, uh, very clear that I saw the cell phone, correct? True. Um, one last question. Have you ever broken any laws? No. Never once. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it off the wall when you're a minor? Objection. Sustained. Um, are you familiar with the uh, Green, Greenfield Police Department's mission statement? Yes. And is one of the uh, tenets of that uh, related to communication? I don't know what we're made of. Um, to the best of your knowledge, does it say that uh, we will establish and maintain open channels of communication? Yes. Would a reasonable person watching the video um, of us asking questions uh, conclude that the open chance of communication was done on your behalf? Objection. Sustained. Uh, I mean, did we not repeatedly ask for clarification on the policy um, that you're requesting based upon? They're not my policies that you're asking about as a house of correction. Do you believe that your statement uh, on the video when you say it, I don't need to show you, um, violates the communication tenant of the uh, Mission statement of your employer? I don't think so. Uh, okay, I'm going to approach the witness and ask him to make a couple of statements from his report. Officer Sumner and I then had to pull the first mail to my cruiser as he refused to walk on his own or assist in any way. Captain Schindler and Sergeant Latimacki pulled the second mail to Officer Sumner's cruiser as he refused to assist in any way. During booking, the two subjects continue to be passively resistant and not cooperate with any questioning, fingerprints, or photographs. But you know that passive resisting is not the same as resisting, so um, do, you, do you still stand by the charge of resisting? I do in the sense that in the event someone actively resists an officer's attempt to actually place him under arrest, and he does something that could lead to some extent of harm between himself or the officer, that is resisting arrest. And by falling to the ground and not assisting yourself or us in walking to the cruiser, yes, there could be injury as a result of that. What is your definition of resisting? What do you understand resisting? Failing to comply with a lawful request made by us. There's yes. levels of resisting. There's active, there's passive, by definition. But have you seen any policies that state Franklin County Jail is not allowed to film? I've never seen one that says that. Did you ask for one that day when you arrived at the city? You did not. So now we realize you made a mistake that you didn't, that the filming was actually not even against policy, but was also possible. <coughs> and then I was arrested under the circumstances. So wouldn't you resist in those incidents by your definition? Sustained. Do you believe you were being lawful or arrested? Would you resist? Yes. Sustained. Would you expect somebody who was unlawfully arrested to resist that arrest? Yes. Sustained. 